new animal species are found all the time, perhaps at a higher rate than new fossil animals are described and published. Makes sense though, you don't have to take bones out of the ground, take them back to a museum to prepare, and then take a year or more describing and waiting to publish your findings. Don't get me wrong, there's still a lot involved, but like, you just have to find the new animal. The most commonly found and described new animal species are almost always small and almost always from tropical regions. A new paper was just published naming a new polka dotted frog from the jungles of Ecuador and you won't believe its name. My gosh, it's Hilo scared of Seth MacFarlane and I. What the hell are you doing here? What, uh, what, 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 what the hell are you doing here? I, I didn't say you could come here. Okay, well, I'm just gonna get in touch with corporate then because, uh, you shouldn't be here, you tiny little frog. <laughs> just kidding, I can't talk. As I stated in the intro, new species are being found all the time. Plenty of overzealous folks have used this fact to help prop up the hopes that medium to large vertebrate animals still hide away in remote corners of the world. This notion may be partially based in fact. After all, comparatively medium to large vertebrates or tetrapods have been discovered even as recently as the 1970s and 80s. However, these seem to be an exception to the rule. An exception to the rule such that any unknown large animal species tend to be found only in specific conditions that contain a multitude of conditions working together to hide said animal. Giant squids, forest ungulates, and the megamouth sharks are all great examples of this. The megamouth sharks were only found, recognized, and described in the 1980s. It was first captured in the late 1970s when it became entangled in a sea anchor of the US Navy. The reason such a large animal, 5.49 meters, 18 feet in length, was able to remain unknown for so long was due to its ecology. They are filter feeders, living most of their lives at great depths. They surface rarely and mostly at night, so no one ever gets the chance to see them. Same pretty much goes for the giant and colossal squids. The Saola, or Asian unicorn, is pretty much the largest and most recent new species found. This spindle-horned bovid was described in 1993 and has one of the smallest ranges of any large mammal inhabiting wet evergreen or deciduous forests in eastern Southeast Asia, preferring river valleys. They aren't horribly large either, with a length of 150 centimeters or 4.9 feet so that tracks as to why it has not been described earlier. Another interesting thing to note before moving on is that all of these large animals tend to be relatives of species, genera, or groups that are already known to science. The megamouth is a mackerel shark, the colossal squid is a glass squid, the giant squid is in a huge order of stereotypical squids, and the saula is part of the boveni tribe. The much more common types of new species found every few days are insects, frogs, salamanders, lizards, snakes, arachnids, and more rarely, very small mammals like rodents, shrews, and bats. These new species also happen to be restricted to certain biological hotspots throughout the world. There is no bigger hotspot than the tropics. Forests, jungles, and rainforests are the best place to hide new species. They are also the best place to isolate populations until they can no longer interbreed, creating new species. Islands were once great places for this too, but their small and fragile natures made their inhabitants extremely vulnerable to extinction, so new species are found there less often these days. All of this background was to establish the needed information around why new frogs and new lizards are found almost every week, leading me into the latest publication of a startlingly festive and toxic frog from the Andes. In Ecuador, in the province of Cotopaxi, the Pastaza River has its headwaters. 
It flows off the northwestern slopes of the volcano Cotopaxi into watersheds that cover the whole region. This has been given the name of the Yanganates Sangue Ecological Corridor. In this corridor and the buffer zone of the Los Yanganates National Park, the Mache Reserve is a private reserve owned by the Ecuadorian NGO foundation Icominga on Cerro Mayordomo. Investigators from Fundacion Icominga and the National Institute of Biodiversity, or INABIO, have been conducting botanical and herpetological expeditions there for two decades, which have led to the discovery of several dozen new species of plants and more than 10 new amphibian and reptile species. During a botanical expedition in March 2018, one of the participants, Darwin Ricalde, fortuitously found a striking black and red adult female frog hiding in a leaf axle of a bromeliad at eye level. During the following months and years, herpetologists from Fundacion Icominga and Inabio conducted additional expeditions to the site and found three juveniles of the same species, just a few meters from the spot where the original individual had been found. Further morphological and genetic comparisons identified these frogs as belonging to a new species of stream frog. This new species is joined by 38 other arboreal frogs in the genus Hyloscurtus. The genus is characterized mainly by the characteristic well-developed lateral fringes on the fingers and toes. All known species are thought to reproduce alongside rushing streams and are distributed from Costa Rica to the Andes of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia. This little frog was given the name Hyloscurtus Seth MacFarlane in honor of Seth MacFarlane, the US film and television creator responsible for the show Family Guy and a longtime supporter of the NGO Rainforest Trust. It seemed perfect to name this frog with its playful polka dots juxtaposed with its most likely threatened status after Seth who is known more for his comedy than his dedication to science and conservation, Rainforest Trust CEO James Deutsch said in a press release. So far, researchers have only found four individual frogs, all within a few square meters of ridgeline atop Cerro Mayordomo, a mountain on the edge of the Amazon basin. The area, which is protected by Icominga's Mache Reserve, is described as steep and relatively inaccessible and has not been well studied. Scientists say they do not have enough data on the new frog species to assign a conservation status. This is a very rare frog found only at high elevations in a remote part of Mache Reserve. Lu Joust, president of Icominga Foundation, wrote in a blog post about the new frog, it took us these four years to find enough individuals to make a thorough description of it. As you can see, this frog is decked out in some tremendous drip. The solid black base color with spots of various warm colors makes for a unique combination of downplayed shadow melting skin tone and bright attention grabbing yellow to red polka dots. Although only one female frog has been found, the researchers suspect all females of the species are black with red spots, as no color variation is found within females of closely related species. According to Lu Joust, this is much more than a beautiful frog. Those bright red and black colors are, like the colors of a monarch butterfly, warning predators that this would be a very bad choice for a meal. Some non-poisonous animals also have such warning colors, hoping to fool a predator, but this frog is the real thing. In fact, the guides who found and collected them felt the effects firsthand. After collecting the first frog, Jost writes, their hands and fingers and even Darwin's elbows started to itch and tingle, and the pain continued even several hours after they had put the frog down. The juveniles are bright yellow and they also exude an unpleasant substance from their skin. Yes, it seems this species exhibits a major change in pigmentation and patterning as it ages and between the sexes. The juveniles are a bright greenish yellow. As they age, they grow patches of black markings that eventually express themselves as the black base color. The female spots seem to turn this bright blood orange. 
while the males keep their spots a bronze orange color, with some sporting much larger patches of this orange. It will be interesting to see what color their tadpoles are and at what ages their colors and patterns begin to morph. The research team was very interested in knowing when this species diverged from its relatives. Had it evolved during the Pleistocene interglacial warm periods, when high elevation species would have been moved higher up mountains and would have formed small island populations? As the paper explains, the team was able to answer that question, and the answer was surprising. With high confidence, this species diverged from its relatives more than 5 million years ago. The best estimate is a divergence time of 9 million years, plus or minus 4 million years. This is even older than the last major uplift of the Ecuadorian Andes. To put this into perspective, that is slightly more than the divergence time between humans and chimps. This is a very distinctive species. Ecuador's forests are home to more than 600 known species of frogs, and more are being described every year, including a species described earlier in 2022 that looks like chocolate. Six other new-to-science species of frogs have been found on Cerro Mayordomo alone. The Mache Reserve on Cerro Mayordomo is part of a 42,052-hectare, 103,913-acre ecological corridor between Yanganates and Sangue National Parks, created by local governments and rural communities. However, the corridor is not an official protected area and therefore has no legal protection status. Our study further confirms the importance of the Yancanates Sangue Ecological Corridor outside of Ecuador's national park system as a center of endemism and diversity, the authors report. What more new frogos will be found next? For more interesting stories about nature, the history of life, or what goes bump in the night, subscribe, hit the bell icon for updates, like this video, and drop a comment in the comment section below. Thanks for watching. Special thanks to my elephant tier patrons Arda Bayer, Biotiverse, Christoph Hubbinger, Dinosaur, Isaiah Garza, PA Brew News, Ray, Rudy Redgrave, Smiling Walrus. And another thanks to my Tyrannosaurus tier patrons Iberospinus, Iron Bladesman, Swaffles is Weird, Teeny Dragator, The Dogman.